interesting uh, for the introduction and thanks to the organizers and for inviting me. So I'll, as Sebastian said, I will talk on two subfactor theory. Uh, so basically, as I told in the abstract, <clears throat> Von Jones introduced subfactor theory. So this is basically how one subalgebra is embedded inside another algebra. That algebra is simple, basically. So that is called two one factor. In the so there is only two algebras involved. One factor, how it is sitting inside another factor. But Oknanyu and uh, Von Jones has uh, later thought that it is equally important to consider many subfactors. So what are the relative position? They ask what uh, relative position of multiple subfactors. But may, unfortunately, not much has been done in the, because uh, theory becomes quite complicated. So I, I shall attempt to explain some of my small contributions to this project uh, following Popa, Popa's work, uh, Jones, Grossman, Izumi, and Oknanyu's work. So uh, let me uh, start from the beginning. What is a soft factor? So I will explain those things um, as there are many experts, sorry for them, so because they already know those things, but let me very briefly introduce those. So a subfactor means some inclusion, like a group and a subgroup here, a factor inside another factor. And the most important invariant is called planar algebra by Von Jones. And th this is complete invariant for large class of subfactor. So as I said, there are multiple subfactors or in involved, then what will happen? So the uh, most easiest example is this intermediate. So we have given this n subset m, but suppose there is another intermediate subfactor, like you have a group H and G, but there is an intermediate subgroup like that. So, but this is the simplest example. Then, uh, so as I said, planar algebra is the most in, important invariant. So, uh, in 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 in, uh, in following Landau and Bina Bhattacharya's work, I, I have done uh, uh, an alternative approach where we have found that planar algebra of n subset p in terms of the planar algebra of n subset m. Probably, in our, in our approach, uh, you can find a lot of uh, detailed versions of the proof. So, so, so basically, what I'm saying that uh, that in invariant of n subset p. Just give me one second. Just. Sorry, so uh, uh, the invariant of n subset p in terms of uh, n subset m uh, that we have done. So this is in the IGM paper in the irreducible case. And we have done in the non-irreducible case, I will explain those terms. So this is very recently with Sruti Murali we have done. So basically this is well understood. If there is one factor involved, this is well understood. But what will happen if you have multiple subfactors? So you have a subfactor n subset m, but suppose now you have two subfactors, p and q. As I said, p is understood. But what will happen for p subset q if there are two subfactors, p and q? Um, so actually, you can think in this way. Suppose we have two subfactors, m, uh, p subset m and q subset m. So the, this is one subfactor. This is another subfactor. Can can you can you build an invariant for this? Can you build a theory on this like like single subfactor theory of Von Jones? This is called two subfactor theory. But main problem is that it is this one. The problem this that if you have two subfactor p subset n and q subset n, this is extremely difficult. So for simplicity, we have assumed that there is a common subfactor n, and this is called a quadruple. Quadruple of two one factor. So this. Uh, in, in, throughout my talk, there is a common subfactor n, otherwise not much known. So, uh, so there are a few invariants for these two subfactor theory. Uh, so, first one is angle between two subfactors, so uh, two intermediate subfactors. It, it, this is uh, in a joint work with uh, Sion Das, Jongwe, and Junxian. So, where we have introduced a new notion of angle. So. Like in plane geometry, we know that there are angle between two lines. Similarly, here, if you have a two subfactors, P subset M and Q subset M, 
and there is a intermediate uh, there is a common subfactor and then we can introduce the angle between these two so this is in the joint work with liu and others in that uh, in, uh, it was successfully done because uh, in that in, in, in this this is in the uh, transactions of ams in i think uh, 18 so in this paper what uh, the novel novel thing was that we could answer the open question asked by roberto longo regarding um, regarding some cardinality of intermediate subfactors. So uh, I will come to that if, if I have time uh, at the end of the talk, I will talk on angle. But in this talk, I don't want to uh, focus on angle. So but a uh, very nice thing probably was that we have uh, found some connection between kissing number in geometry and rigidity of angle. So that angle, like Jones index was very rigid, as you can see in my talk. Similarly, this angle, we have found that angle also very rigid. and and uh, there's a relationship between kissing number and this thing. And we believe that like Jones index, that angle might be uh, might be a nice invariant for two subfactor theory and a lot of future research should be done on this. Uh, we, we don't know much on, uh, for example, possible values of that angle and we need more applications of angle. So this is one research, nice research direction. But uh, in, there are other things uh, of two subfactor theory. There are other invariants. So, there are two other, one is called Pimsner Popa probabilistic constant. This is uh, from old work of Popa. So this is one invariant uh, for two subfactor. Another one is Constormer relative entropy. So my, my talk will be focused on these two invariants. Now let, let me uh, do very preliminary very quickly. Uh, most of you know already. So our playground is B of H. So this is a, H is a separable Hilbert space and B of H is uh, a bounded linear operator on Hilbert space. So T is a bounded operator from H to H. And what is a von Neumann algebra? This is nothing but some WOT closed subalgebra of B of H. So AM is a certain subalgebra of B of H. It is uh, closed in some locally convex topology that is called weak, topo weak operator topology. And there are various equivalent definitions. I don't want to go to that, but uh, let me mention the reference those of you are interested. So it is done by von Neumann in uh, 1929 and later major part of this theory has been developed by with his postdoc collaborator Murray. And this is in a series of paper called Rings of Operator in Annals of Math. So uh, please, you can interrupt me at any time if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate, please. So uh, this, this is a von Neumann algebra and there's this famous double commutant theorem which says that uh, this is more algebraic. Uh, so a von Neumann algebra is nothing but a sub-algebra of B of H such that AM equals M double commutant. Uh, double commutant means what? Double commutant means a, 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 one, taking one commutant and then another commutant. So where, what is commutant? So AM is a sub-algebra. Oh, sorry. AM is a sub-algebra of B of H and commutant means all elements in B of H which commutes with M. And then it is AM equals uh, M double prime. That is the definition of von Neumann algebra. You can take this double commutant theorem as a definition of von Neumann algebra. This is more algebraic and uh, the previous definition, what I said was uh, topological. So my beauty is that von Neumann proved that these two are equivalent. Now uh, let us consider a pair of uh, inclusions of such von Neumann algebra N subset M. And uh, there is like the classical conditional expectation, like we have a probability space and another uh, sub sigma algebra. Then we have a notion of conditional expectation. Similarly, if we have a sub algebra, we have a notion of conditional expectation, which generalizes that classical conditional expectation. So it is a norm one projection, and uh, this is a bilinear map. So uh, this is modeled by that uh, conditional expectation from uh, probability theory. Now, uh, what, when is a factor? So building blocks of von Neumann algebra are called factors in the sense that a von Neumann algebra can be written as a direct sum of uh, certain simple algebra called factors. So what is a factor means it's center, which is defined as M intersect M prime, center is trivial. Or in other words, it has no uh, closed ideal, uh, whichever topology you take norm, uh, all will be equivalent you can prove in sigma, in, in this weak operator topology. So there are no ideal. For example, one example is MNC n by n matrix. So this is clearly trivial. It is center is trivial. So it is a simple algebra. So it is called a factor if this happens. 
and uh, and the, according to the behavior of projection factors are classified in various type type 1 type 2 and type 3 i don't want to go to the details My, our main focus will be only focusing on type 2 one factor so it is basically infinite dimensional analogs of matrix algebra what is that uh, so basically it is uh, i mean like what is special about matrix algebra that it has a trace right the, just take the um, sum of the diagonals it has a trace. Similarly, two one factor is nothing. It is an infinite dimensional factor and has a trace. Trace means uh, there's a some positive map from M to C such that it satisfies this property, like the matrix trace. Trace of x y equals T R of y x, like that. So there is a trace. That's it. The trace means a linear functional which uh, behaves like the matrix trace. But main thing is that it is infinite dimensional. So these are called type one factors. Now, uh, there is a uh, Gelfand Neumark Seagal construction, GNS construction. As soon as M, now from in my talk, everything will be two one factor. All fundamental algebra, uh, all uh, uh, factors will be two one factor. So on M, we have a trace, right? So using that trace, we can define an inner product. And using that inner product, M becomes, uh, and its completion of M becomes a Hilbert space which we denote by L2M. This is again in the analogy of LP space, basically, because any commutative one norman algebra looks like L infinity X mu. And then, then, then the measure defines a trace. And then if you do the GNS, you can get L2 X mu. See, so in that analogy, if you keep in mind, then you will understand why it is called L2M. So this is the GNS construction. Now, M can be uh, thought of as a subalgebra of B of L2M. L2M, remember, is a Hilbert space. By left multiplication, it sits inside B of L2M. Now, let us have some examples. So, uh, suppose, so, sorry, uh, when can I finish? Actually, I start later. So, uh, what is the time? Uh, you have one hour and more. Uh, actually, we, we, have, uh, we can uh, end at 12, uh, hour 12. So, uh, in an hour, so so you have plenty of time. Okay, fine. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. So basically, I will uh, say some examples. So suppose you have a countable discrete group, and as you know, there is a left regular representation which which is basically uh, map from G to unitary elements of L to G. L to G means its basis are delta S, like the Kronecker deltas, and S S are elements of G. So what lambda does? Lambda is a homomorphism from G to U L to G. That means lambda of G acting on delta S, nothing but delta G dot S, that group operation. Uh, so uh, this, uh, more precisely, it is this one. So this is called uh, left regular representation and everything happening in B of L to G, right? So you ha it has a weak operator topology. So take uh, lambda of G and then take the weak operator closer. So you get a von Neumann algebra L of G. This is called group von Neumann algebra. Nothing special about left regular representation. You can take uh, right group von Neumann algebra also. And there is a really nice relation that this is a prime of other. So yeah, so this is called a group von Neumann algebra. So from a group, you can um, uh, define a von Neumann algebra. And as you know, there's a famous open problem called free group factor. So yet it is not known whether uh, this is isomorphic to as a von Neumann algebra, these two are isomorphic or not for AM not equals N. So, uh, so the, this is not a uh, uh, lot of structures are there actually in group one one and not well understood in some things. Okay, and but on the other way, this is the simplest example of uh, non-trivial one one algebra. Now, my our question is when LG is a factor because we are and more generally when it is a two one factor. So it can be shown that it will be a factor. Uh, I mean, it, if it is a factor, it will automatically be a type two one factor. So. Fact is that LG is a factor, type 2 1 factor, if and only G so called ICC group. That means its conjugacy class of non trivial element is infinite. So this is called ICC group, infinite conjugacy class group. And examples are plenty. For example, S, S in a, uh, I mean, infinite uh, permutation group and B group with N generators. And also, if you have an ICC group and any finite index subgroup, if you take, that finite index subgroup will be also <coughs> ICC. So from an ICC group, you can form many ICC groups. So, and given any ICC group, L of G will be a type two one factor. So we have an example of type two one factor. 
and it can be given a natural trace because uh, as one factor has a unique trace so and this is the unique trace the uh, identity component of uh, of the uh, representation of element of x um, and and uh, so how to obtain other factors so suppose you have a type 2 one factor m can you produce another new kind of type 2 one factor yes it can be done so here even you consider a finite group g and then suppose g acts on m so if you have a nice action then mg, this is the fixed point. Fixed point means set of all element in M, which uh, commute, which fixes by action. So this is mg, fixed point algebra. And for nice action, so-called outer action, like uh, ergodic theoretic action, called free action, if you have this nicer actions, then this will be also a two-one factor. And also one, uh, one can, there is certain notion called cross-product construction. So this will be also a type one factor. I won't go to the uh, details of cross product construction. So it is like some twisted tensor product kind of thing. You can, I mean, M tensor B of L2G and then some kind of twist you can think. So anyway, but later via Jones index theory, you will understand this better in my talk. So, so this is called cross product construction. So out of two one factor M, we can produce another two one factor. And therefore what we got, so uh, basically, uh, yeah. Okay, so what we got an inclusion of two one factor mg subset m, or more generally, if you have a subgroup and a group, we can have this inclusion mg subset mh, and also we have m subset m cross g. So this is an inclusion of two one factor, and also you more generally for subgroup and this. And nice, nice thing is that this encodes all the subgroup theory by work of Jones, Cohn, and Oknani. This whole subgroup theory can can be thought of as is uh, subsumed by this subfactor theory by this subgroup subfactor. These are called subfactor. Whenever we have an inclusion of two one factor unital inclusion, these are called subfactor. So other, other example for if you have a ICC group and a subgroup, LH subset LG. So these are all examples of subfect. Now this really groundbreaking work started from uh, Von Jones. So uh, the, the simple, I, I mean, this is very nice and but simple ideas. Like if you have a group and a subgroup, we have a notion of index. So in his uh, invention, his paper, what he has done basically, uh, this is the paper name I have not written. This is called index for subfactor. This is in 1983 in invention is math. So what he has done, given this subfactor n subset m, he has introduced or discovered a notion of index. And the beautiful thing is that this generalizes the subgroup index. So if you have this group subgroup we have this uh, index, we can get back the subgroup index. So, and more generally, LG, I'm not more generally, and also LG index LH will be also G index H. And if you take the fixed point, NG, sorry, NH index NG, because that is also a subfactor, it will be the G. So this, this can be really thought of as a, um, as a index, a, as a generalization of subgroup index. and. The way it has been defined, it is basically the GNS construction L2M can be thought of as NN by module. And uh, Mare von Neumann has done some, uh, uh, that there is something called dimension function or uh, coupling constant. So using that dimension, it is the dimension of L2M as a left end module. Uh, I cannot uh, define all these things, but later you will see that we have an alternative, various definitions, alternative definitions. So, but uh, what is the, uh, the groundbreaking idea is that in that same paper, he answered that what are the possible values of index? So basically it says that there is a uh, strange rigidity. So after four, it takes all the half line, all values between four to infinity, it takes all the possible values. But before four, before four, it takes only discrete value, four cos square pi by n. So, First value is one. And then surprising thing is that next value is two. And in between one and one and two, there are no values. So it continues like that. 
4 cos square pi by n. And also, this is the fact that if index is 1, if and only if n equals m. So these are the things. So, so after 4, then up, uh, after 2, it will be related with this uh, golden ratio. And the possible values will go like this, and it will the limit will be 4. So basically, you can see that the limit will be 4. So it will be 4 cos square pi by n. This is called famously called Jones index rigidity. So these are the possible values of index. And this is already done. So yeah, so let us continue with this effect theory. So uh, so what is there? So we have this inclusion n subset m. And from m, we have a Hilbert space L to m, <coughs> GNS construction. So similarly, because uh, we have a trace on m, if you restrict that trace on n, you will get another trace. But this is the unique trace because two one factor has a unique trace one can easily prove. So, uh, so that using that trace also from n, we can define another Hilbert space L to n that do the GNS construction. So we have a inclusion of Hilbert space L to n subset L to n. And that was the key point. So we have an inclusion of two one factor. Now we have an inclusion of Hilbert space. Now you can do the geometry. So as soon as you have a uh, this notion of uh, you have a subspace, and this is a clearly closed subspace. So we have a projection, Hilbert space projection. These are called E sub n, these are called Jones projection. And this was the key thing, and one of the key things in Jones index rigidity. And a and, and, and nice thing is that this Jones projection induces a that conditional expectation as i told in the uh, first few slides that given an inclusion of von neumann algebra there is a notion of conditional expectation n subset m there is a notion of conditional expectation and this conditional expectation is intimately related with this jones projection here omega is the cyclic vector of gns construction so you can think that that, that, that is the uh, jones projection basically conditional expectation in the hilbert space level in the uh, sub factor level this is in the hilbert space level so this Jones projection is related with the conditional expectation. Basically, the restriction of the Jones projection on the factor M. Okay, I won't say much on this. And, but yeah, but this I should say that conditional expectation, which is a map from M to M onto N, this is trace preserving. By that I mean trace of trace is a map. Remember, trace is a map from M to C. So if you take trace of E N of X where x is in m, you will get back that trace, trace of x. So it is trace preserving, like that conditional expectation. If you remember the conditional expectation in probability theory, this is exactly the trace preserving condition. So this is nice. Now, uh, interesting thing happens when a subfactor is finite index. So we'll only focus when a subfactor n subset m, that the index is finite. Otherwise, not uh, much is known, actually. So uh, this is done by a celebrated paper by Pimsnar and Popa in 1986, where they have shown that given a uh, finite index subfactor, there is a certain notion of basis. And uh, that so these are certain finitely many elements inside M, such that any element of M can be written as in terms of that conditional expectation. This you can think as n value inner product. So this is really like the basis. So uh, just remember that these are elements of M. So this will generate whole M, this finitely many elements. So this is a finitely generated module, that M. Uh, so, uh, so for the subfactor R cross H, always remember this analogy with the subgroup, R, R cross H and R cross G, the coset representatives is the basis. Uh, and and then there is a notion called the, which is very crucial in Jones index rigidity. I uh, talked earlier. This is called Jones basic construction. So what uh, this beauty is that given a subfactor n subset m, Jones produced another subfactor m subset m one, the m subset m one. So this m one also sits inside B of L two m. And nice thing is that this index m one index m. This is same as Jones index. So this M1 is called the this procedure to obtaining M1, another two one factor from the old subfactor N subset M is called the basic construction. So for example, uh, you can understand that if you have a fixed point subfactor NG cross N, if you do the basic construction, 
you can get the cross product. So you can understand cross product as a basic construction of fixed point. So this is one example. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I have not really uh, defined Jones index, but using basis, you can immediately define the Jones index. Um, uh, but I mean, uh, basically, yeah, this is alternative form formulation because uh, remember that Popa, Popa and Popa proved that if the index is finite, there exists basis. So we can define Jones index like that, that given a sub factor, we say that it is finite index if there exists basis, we can say that. And so, so we have this uh, subset of M, then it is a basis if and only if this sum holds. And then we can define Jones index like this summation, summation uh, lambda i, lambda i star. One, one caveat is that uh, if you have another uh, uh, basis, so mu j, still that sum will be constant. So these are same, the summation mu j, mu j star will be same as summation lambda lambda star. And the same, this quantity, the scalar, that is one of the thing in Pimsner proper basis. So, and this is called the Jones index. This you can define as Jones index. And, uh, and then the, the, the Jones basic construction, one can uh, iterate it. Uh, that, that, that has been shown another paper of uh, Pimsner and Popa in transactions that given a two one factor n subset of m, we can obtain m one, right? Now consider m subset m one. Do the again the uh, basic construction. So you, you obtain m two like that. You obtain a chain of sub factor m k, and each one is periodic. So the index will be same. This is called Jones basic construction, and you can obtain a many Jones projections. So so n subset m m1 e1 is the jones projection for m1 now m subset m1 and m2 for that e2 is the jones projection so you obtain a uh, chain of uh, jones projection ek and this these are related with temporally leave algebra and uh, that was the key ingredient in jones polynomial planar algebra all in all the aspects of subfactor these are the key aspects the jones projection Okay, now another thing. So uh, as soon as we have a subfactor, we need an invariant. So this invariant is called planar algebra and the skeleton of planar algebras are relative commutants. So what are the relative commutants? Relative commutants are uh, basically, uh, as I said, n prime intersect m. Uh, if, if what is that? It is a set of all elements in m such that this commutes for all elements in m. So elements of m which commutes with m. Similarly, n prime intersect mk minus one, mk minus one, remember this is the uh, multiple basic construction, iterated basic construction. So it is the element of mk minus one which commutes with n. So these are called nth relative commutant. And it can be shown that these all are finite dimensional, that n prime intersect mk are finite dimensional. So this, we have another inclusion of finite dimensional sister algebra. This is the finite dimensional sister algebra, I mean, take some of matrix algebra, semi-simple. So this is also semi-simple. So we have easier thing. So we want to approximate the difficult thing, which is infinite dimensional subfactor in terms of this easier blocks of finite dimensional things. So this is the key notion of planar algebra or standard invariant by Popa. Okay, these are called relative commutant. And a subfactor is called irreducible. If uh, this n prime intersect m is scalar. So there, uh, n subset m is called irreducible if n prime intersect m is just trivial. This is called irreducible. Examples are this subgroup subfactor n plus h and n plus g for nice action. Okay. Uh, now I talk about Pimsnar Popa index. This uh, is a nice picture of uh, Voigelescu and Pimsnar and Popa. So uh, in Pimsnar and Popa, what uh, I had describe certain notion of probabilistic index for an input. There is another way to look at uh, index. So given an inclusion of von Neumann algebra, so B2 subset B1, one can uh, describe certain probabilistic index, lambda B1 comma B2, which is nothing but supremum of all scalars such that E B2 X greater than equals lambda X. So it is called probabilistic because one of the reason is that it involves that conditional expectation. Uh, so uh, this supremum, actually this is not just supremum, this is the maximum basically. So this is called, uh, this is certain invariant for this kind of inclusion, B2 subset B1. It's called, uh, called Pimsnar-Popa index. Why this is called again index? Uh, because 
this is has been done by Pimpsnar and Popa that if you have a subfactor, these two notions, lambda m comma n, n subset m, already we have a notion of index. And now we have a notion of probabilistic index in terms of uh, this conditional expectation from V1 onto V2. So this is how flat elements of X in terms of this conditional expectation. This says, this is the measurement of that. I cannot motivate this now, but uh, probably later you can see in the two subfactors how this will again come up. So this is also uh, same as Jones index. So this is another way of looking this. And the main thing is that there is a projection inside M such that if you through the trace preserving conditional expectation, you will get back the Jones index. That was the key thing in defining that uh, probabilistic index. Now, as I, as I have told you that given a subfactor N subset M, you can go, go on and obtain a chain of subfactor M1, like that basic construction you can do. Now let us come back to our two subfactor theory, our research. So here we have a two subfactor M subset Q and M subset P and a common subfactor M. Now we can do the, similarly, we can do the basic construction of the quadruple. So uh, basically for P subset M, if you do the Jones uh, basic construction, if you do, you will get another two one factor P1. For Q subset M, you will get another two one factor Q1. So we obtain a dual quadruple, uh, P1, Q1, M1. So out of a two one factor, uh, two sub factor Q and P, we obtain another two one, uh, sorry, two sub factor P1 and Q, which lies inside M1. Remember M1 is N subset M basic construction. So this is called, the, so basic construction of this quadruple is this quadruple. So this has a nice picture here. So we have already these two sub factor P and Q. We have done a basic construction, obtain P1. Basic construction of Q we have done and obtain Q1. And basic construction of N is M1. So from this quadruple, we obtain that quadruple. And that's, that will be important again, as usual. So I, I don't want to do angle things now. So if I have time later, I will see. Uh, let us skip this because I don't have any. So let me go back to the Pimpsnar Popa probabilistic constant. So you, you can see that the Pimpsnar Popa's definition, you can just modify and that will exactly work for the two one factor also, for two sub factor P and Q also. No need that P is subset of Q. The same definition, suprema, we, <coughs> we can no longer write maximum, but the supremum of all T such that E Q X greater than equal to T X. So here I have taken X, positive element from P plus. And then we have expected to Q. So we have considered all such scalar and took the supremum. So this, we believe this lambda PQ is an important invariant like angle for, for this two subtractor theory. And, and nice thing is that one can easily prove that it lies in between zero and one. And this is another reason why it should be called probabilistic index actually. So, uh, so this is in between zero and one. So this is an important invariant. And now next question, like this is, we can think of as the measurement of the relative position in between P and Q. So like we have the measurement for the sub factor N inside M, we have this measurement called index. Now we have a new measurement, lambda PQ. Jones has tried this question. Jones has done this question that what are the possible values of index? So natural question, what are the possible values of this lambda PQ? Now, uh, this is what I have done in uh, proceedings of AMS recently, that, uh, but under some, this irreducible condition, we don't know beyond that. So if you have a subfactor which is irreducible, then we can give an explicit formula of uh, lambda PQ in terms of the Jones projection. See, here I should say, what to say here. Yeah. Yeah, so what is this EP? So remember that N subset M we have, and then M1, that Jones projection, that the Jones projection is EN, right? Similarly for P subset M and for P1, EP, E sub P is the Jones projection. And this trace is everything happening in M1. So that is why I said that middle subfactor, this common subfactor N is very important. Otherwise I don't know the proofs. So we have this condition, we have this, two subfactor P and Q, but we have this extra assumption that there is an irreducible common subfactor. Then I can explicitly uh, give a formula of lambda PQ and uh, let me, and this, uh, this came from the, uh, this, uh, one of the idea came from my, uh, our paper with uh, Zhongwei and others 
that there is an uh, that's EP star EQ, that is the P operator in terms of the basis we have. And using that, we have a notion of, we have a projection. Like in the in the N subset M, we have already some projection in M. And uh, similarly here also, we can have a projection, but for that we need something called downward basic construction. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, because here that why we have a, in, in Pimstrand and Popa's construction, why we have a projection E, such that E N E is the Jones index inverse because of downward basic construction. Similarly, here also we can have a downward basic construction and then I, I don't want to go to the details of these things. There are some manipulations I have done. Uh, what is downward? Just let me, uh, I, I won't go to the detailed proof, but let me say the downward thing. So as I said, from N subset M, we went to M1 for the forward direction basic construction. Similarly, you can get in the downward direction, we can obtain another two one factor N minus one such that this n minus one subset n, this basic construction will be n subset n. So this similar thing one can do for the uh, quadruple also. So we can obtain a downward uh, basic construction of a quadruple. And then we have obtained this P, using this P operator, we have found a projection and using this projection and, and uh, complete, po complete positivity of conditional expectation proves that result. So, this is some kind of uh, modification of Popa's ideas and our angle ideas and something little bit uh, what. So, uh, so that, 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 that follows uh, that in the irreducible case, we can give an explicit and very and probably useful formula of lambda PQ. And this generalizes uh, that Popa's uh, thing is that lambda is the generalization of Jones index. For, for if, you opt, if, you, if P and Q are same as N, then we get back their result. So, and later you can see that this, this uh, our proposition has an application in entropy. So, uh, let me quickly say, the, the, so for the pair of soft factor, nicest thing is the commuting square. So, uh, this is like, uh, like independence of two random variables, basically. So, suppose we have a quadruple uh, P and Q, we say when it is a commuting square, if this conditional expectation EQ and this conditional expectation EP, this commute. So if this diagram commutes. And in terms of our angle, one can say that this angle will be pi by two. So 90 degree angle is equivalent to that commuting square condition. And this is uh, very important in subfactor theory, this commuting square. So in the commuting square case, uh, the corollary of my result, one can prove that lambda PQ will be Jones index inverse, lambda PQ. Similarly, lambda QP. By the way, lambda PQ in general not equals to lambda QP. Although the angle between PQ and angle between Q and P are same. So this lambda uh, is, uh, is actually, uh, I mean, occurs, I mean, it's more general than this angle thing because in, in angle we can, we need the middle, sub, the common subfactor N. So we have P and Q, we have this common N. But to define lambda, we don't need that n. So in, in, so in the sense that it is more difficult to obtain the possible values of lambda. Now, of course, the angle value, angle also very difficult to know. But uh, on the other hand, you can think in this way that angle is also more calculable in some sense, in, in relatively more calculable than lambda. And, uh, and we can explicitly, uh, for the group and the subgroup, so we have a... Uh, two one factor uh, hyperfinite two one factor R and we have a subgroup H and K R K suppose R G then we can explicitly write the formulas of lambda P Q in terms of that formula I have given uh, so here is this and and nice thing is that <coughs> this theorem again so sub, so here is the thing we have this quadruple Now, and from this quadruple, we have a basic construction, right? M1, this is P1, this is M1, and this is Q1, and this, sorry, this is M. So we have this. A nice thing is that this, like we have seen that if we have N subset, M subset, M1, then M1 index M is same as M index N, this periodicity. Similar things happen here also. That lambda, this can be easily shown by planar algebra, basically and using my formula. So this is uh, lambda P1, Q1 will be same as lambda QP and similarly lambda Q1, P1 also will be same as lambda P comma Q. Uh, use this, uh, this pictorially, it beautifully it follows. You, basically, 
one advantage of this granular algebra uh, that of, of Jones actually that lot of analytic things you can draw by pictures and proofs will be more uh, handy basically it will be more easier. So uh, this is the formula between uh, these and apply our that formula of lambda I obtained uh, here. This then from that it will follow trace EPQ divided by trace EPQ. Okay, so this is all about Pimsnar Popa constant. Now I come to the uh, constormer relative entropy. So this is in an old paper uh, what he has done of Alan Cohn and uh, Stormer. So, given a pair of finite dimensional von Neumann subalgebra of P and Q of a finite von Neumann algebra M, you can assume that two one factor. We have a notion of a relative entropy P given Q. And this is perfect generalization of conditional entropy, classical conditional entropy from information theory or ergodic theory. And, and this is the correct generalization of conditional entropy because they could prove that Kolmogorov Sinai type theorem. Uh, and using this relative entropy, Kohn and Stormer has defined entropy of an automorphism. So, but Pimsner and Popa, what they have observed that don't we don't need finite dimensionality. So, for example, if you have any two one factor and any sub algebra, infinite dimensional also P and Q, one can have a notion of relative entropy H P given Q. So, these are all uh, generalization of conditional entropy from ergodic theory. This is you can. Say that this is the starting point of non commutative ergodic theory. This, uh, this, is, this is in ACTA Mathematica in around, I think, 70s, 1978 or 76, I forgot. So, this is really We call it constormer relative entropy. We call this one that constormer relative entropy for P and Q infinite dimension. So, as, as so this is the nice picture of uh, <coughs> two subfactor theory. Here, there are no common, nothing common. You can still define this thing. And this def definition is a little bit involved. So suppose we, this is uh, motivated by conditional entropy because there we have a uh, entropy between two partitions. And here partitions are characteristic functions and which are projection, but um, they have cones and Stormer have seen that we don't need projection because sometimes finding projections are difficult. So positive element will, will do basically. So what they have taken, uh, I mean, this is the modification by Pinsner and Popa. So, given a type 2 1 factor for any general finite von Neumann algebra, tertial von Neumann algebra, and you have a, uh, two von Neumann sub algebras, P and Q, then we consider the set of all partitions of M. So, positive element with sum is 1. And this um, uh, ergodic theoretic that eta actually, that Con, uh, concave function that t going to minus t log t. If you take this and using functional calculus, one can define that uh, relative entropy by fixing one partition gamma. So this is this is the trace preserving conditional expectation and eta map, and we have used the trace. Trace is the trace of the two one factor. And now what they have done, they have taken the supremum. That is the uh, beauty of this non commutative version. They have taken the supremum over all the partitions. So see, uh, this is related uh, by, uh, no, this is uh, more general than the classical because this tau is related with the integration actually, as you can see this, they are using this trace, we can do non commutative integration theory. So in terms, in, in, instead of that integration, we have now trace. So this is called constormer entropy. And one can easily prove that this is positive and it is zero if and only P subset. This is powerful. So it is zero if and only P subset of Q. And nothing much is known about this entropy, basically. But Pimsner and Popa, in again, that uh, groundbreaking paper where this uh, basic construction, all these things, he has developed Pimsner Popa basically. In the same paper, they have proved that this, so, so they consider this sub factor and consider this relative entropy, M given M, and then found that this is surprisingly, this is related with the Jones index. So, uh, and they characterize when this index, uh, this, uh, they, they proved that for irreducible subfactor, irreducible, remember, means n prime intersect m is scalar. They proved that age of m given n is nothing but logarithm of Jones index. And this is more generally, this holds for extremal subfactor. And this is the characterization. I don't want detailed description of extremality. So, a subfactor is extremal if something happens on the trace, actually, on the relative commutant. So, this is. 
uh, equivalent to that, that age will be equal to logarithm of index. Again, this is for one subfactor, m and n and m. And more generally, uh, they have proved this. As, uh, this is the theorem that a subfactor is extremal if and only entropy is equal to logarithm of index. And this is a uh, lot of work is needed. And more generally, they have proved even forget about uh, finite, uh, forget about irreducibility. Even for infinite index, also they have proved. But let me focus on finite index. And if you have these atoms, take the atoms of n prime intersect m, that means minimal projection with sum is one, then we can give an explicit formula of uh, index uh, of that uh, constructor entropy. However, still the uh, explicit computation is very difficult. And that paper was devoted to uh, given explicit computations of uh, entropy, even for finite dimension. So this is a very important paper. Now, my question is, uh, how to calculate age P given Q uh, if you have a two, uh, this pair of subfactors? And again, for simplicity, I assume N, otherwise nothing is known. But this uh, seems to be extremely difficult. But uh, the small result I found in this same paper where I talked about lambda PQ, uh, that is the one of the reasons that we have uh, found the value of lambda. So for the irreducible subfactor, we can, and, and we have irreducible means in prime intersect MC, always remember, and, and also this finite index. Otherwise, also, I don't know anything. If you have finite index, then age is equal to minus log lambda P. That, and that is the perfect generalization of that Pimsner and Popa's earlier result. So age P given Q is minus log lambda P comma Q. And um, I, I, I won't go to the detail. There are a lot of technical lemmas are there. So, and using that uh, lambda's explicit formula, corollary is that I can give an explicit formula of age Q given Q in terms of Jones projection. So hopefully this is calculable and recently we found some applications of this formula. Um, okay, so uh, this uh, this is that, uh, for, but course, uh, this is only for irreducible and finite index. Yeah, and, and as I said that uh, lambda P1, Q1 is equal to lambda PQ. I proved that P1, Q1 is the quad, uh, basic construction of the quadruple. And using this earlier result, this, we can prove that for the, uh, this uh, for the um, basic construction of the quadruple p1 q1 this entropy is also invariant h p1 q1 comma p1 is same as h p given q oh sorry this is h q1 given p1 remember again as usual this is not true h q given p not equals to h p given q this is not commuted and one applications it is which is like the jones index rigidity using that earlier work of mine in pams i can prove that if you have this quadrilateral that means if you have this m here p and q n such that p join q is m and p mid q intersection q is n in that case these are same hp given q and hq given p are same if you assume that this index and that index is Less than four. This is, this is by uh, fundamental works by various various mathematicians that one can classify subfactors for small index subfactor. Remember, but after four, that uh, I mean, it's not easy to classify subfactor beyond six. Nothing is known basically. But uh, following their work and our, our recent work on PAMS, my, my recent work, I can prove that this if this index is less than four, this entropy is also a uh, gap. It will take these values, 4 cos square pi by 2k minus 1. But I don't know that uh, if you take one of them, p index n or q index n is greater than 4, I don't know anything. Right? So not only p index n and q index n is small, if you take m index p and m index q is small also by this previous result that it in entropy, at least in the irreducible case, is well behaved with the basic construction. Using that, we can prove that if, if m index p and m index q, m is the above. If this C is small, then also these possible values have gaps. And, and another, how much time I have? I I'm, I'm uh, almost done. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh, 20 minutes. So uh, I mean, I'm almost done. Then I'll talk about angle then at the end. Okay. So 
so yeah, so I, and, and one small application. This probably I should have one proof. Let me prove this one at least. I, I have time. So we have this uh, P and this is Q and this one, this N, all this inclusion. And if this index is two, whatever be Q index, N, M index, Q, M index, Q, whatever it be. And if you have this irreducibility that HP, com not comma, I should not say comma, this is given HP given Q is either zero or log two. That is the thing. So here Q index N can be small. Probably this can be generalized to, uh, uh, to super transitivity or something. I have not tried that, but uh, let, us, let me sketch a proof of this. First, uh, we'll, we'll use this one that H equals to minus uh, log lambda that uh, I talked before. So, uh, so to prove that age is either zero or log two, I'll just prove that lambda PQ is either one or half. So uh, one, one nice thing in, 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 in index for subfactor paper of Jones, he has shown that if you go through the paper, you will see that if this, in, that is the main thing he was motivated to define index. So what will happen if index is two? And the beautiful thing is that, that is there is a Goldman type uh, result there. I mean, Gold, Goldman's result, which Jones written beautifully, that if index is two, then Z2 acts on N, and M is nothing but N cross Z2. This is the characterization. And using this, one can show that there is always a unitary orthonormal basis for P given N. So take one comma unitary, even U is the unitary. So suppose you choose that basis, one comma N for P given N, because it is given that P index N is two. Now you define this operator P equals EQ plus U EQ U star. Then uh, one can prove that P EQ will be actually lambda times EQ for some scalar lambda. So put it here, P equal EQ plus U EQ U star, multiply by right by, uh, by EQ. So, and use that P EQ equal to lambda EQ. Then we got this. Here I should say something, where can I write? Uh, let me erase this and this I should mention. This is uh, something called push down lemma. So we have this n subset m subset m1 we have. And suppose m is an element of capital M such that uh, suppose m1 and m2 are elements of capital M. And if m1 uh, times e1, e1 is the Jones projection. Uh, I mean, e sub n basically. So M1, E1, if it is equal to M2, E1, then we can prove that M1 equal to M2. <coughs> Our proof is very simple, basically. It, you take the conditional expectation, e, M1, M, on both sides, M1, E1. So M1 will come outside because of property of conditional expectation. Then e, 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 M1, M of E1, is this is scalar, Jones index. So this is M1. Similarly, if you take this conditional expectation in the right side, you will get M2. So M1 will be M2. Now come back to this proof. So using that unitary basis, uh, one and U, we have defined this operator, auxiliary operator P, EQ plus U, EQ, U star, then multiply by EQ, both sides. So what we get and use this, uh, this uniqueness condition of the push down lemma, M1, E1 equal to M2, E2. Then we can prove that lambda minus one is nothing but u eq u star, right? Because uh, this lambda is same as this, as I said before. Now, this is a scalar, lambda minus one is a scalar, which is equal to u eq u star. So there are two possibilities, either lambda is one, and if lambda is one, then this n p q m will be a commuting square. And, if, uh, and then, Entropy will be zero. That can be proved easily. And and uh, then in the other case, if lambda non-zero, then put uh, u is a unitary, so you can uh, multiply by u star. And using that, one one can immediately prove that lambda will be half. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, if lambda is one, then NPQM will be a commuting square. And so uh, if it is a commuting square, somewhere I have proved that lambda PQ equals to lambda PN. Right. Yeah, 
So lambda p q equal to p n uh, this inverse if it is a commutative square. Lambda p comma q is one by p n. So use that. If lambda is one, sorry, you get the confusion. One second. <coughs> yeah. So if lambda equals to one, it will be a commuting square. So lambda pq will be one by pn, and p index n is two. So lambda pq will be half. And if lambda not equals to one, then u is a unitary, and u will be inside q. So ultimately, it will be p subset q. And remember. If P subset Q, then entropy will be automatically zero. See? And the definition of entropy to C. If H P given is zero, if and only P subset Q. So these are the two possibilities. This is just applications of whatever we have done, I just said. So uh, what my, my point is that one can try this, what are the possible values of entropy and that is what my recent research research is focused on um, so I, i'm working on this direction so i have uh, proved for some test cases basically yeah uh, so uh, now i'll talk about some uh, future direction suppose uh, we have a pair of subfactor p and q then my main question is characterize this when a is equals to minus log lambda this seems to be extremely hard like Popa have characterized this when this happens, log uh, minus log lambda mn, or maybe the same as log log Jones index. And this is called ex characterization is, is called extremal subfactor. So there is no notion of joint extremality. But I mean, very, very difficult. I don't know why it is difficult. I should say because one of the reason is this. Suppose we have this two one factor p and q. First major problem is that. P index Q need not be a two one factor. That is one difficulty. So we are lying. So first you have started with the two sub factor theory, two sub factor. But that N, which is the intersection of P intersection Q, will go beyond that category. It will not be a two one factor. It will be a finite. It will be a type two one von Neumann algebra. That is fine. But it is not a factor. And even if it is a factor, this can be infinite index. And infinite index almost nothing is known basically. So uh, one of the difficulty, as I said, it is that it is not a factor. And then next one thing that the index may be infinite. And another difficulty, if you assume that it is even a finite index of factor, it's not necessarily that it is the case that n, in the n subset m, that n p intersection q subset m, this is not necessarily irreducible. So you have to go, even if you assume that this is irreducible, that is irreducible. Still n subset of may not be irreducible. And um, uh, whatever I have done in my work only works for irreducible subfactor. And beyond that, nothing is, I don't know in the, is there anything in the literature or not. However, very recently with my colleague Sotajit Gwyn, it is um, still in the preliminary stage and uh, one version is on archive. So we'll, uh, very soon we'll upload uh, version two where we'll have some substantial uh, improvement where we have described uh, entropy beyond the, tried to describe the entropy, relative entropy beyond the uh, irreducible case. So this is this is the name of the paper, relative be position between a pair of spin model subfactor. This, uh, this is a very important class of subfactor coming from commuting square and uh, certain combinatorial data actually. So then from that, we can construct a pair of subfactor and there, there, there we can go beyond irreducibility. But, uh, but uh, infinite index, so we don't know even if these two are irreducible or not. So uh, this whole talk is extract, extracted from this paper. Uh, this is actually published. I, I, uh, I should update it to publish. So this is a short note on relative entropy for a pair of intermediate sum. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kesha, for this very interesting talk. Thank you. So if uh, someone has a question, please uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, Uh, but maybe I can I can start by asking a question myself. So you, yeah. 
during all your uh, your talk, you are, you are talking. You said n should be a sub factor, <clears throat> and at the end, you 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 consider the case where you just take p and q, and you said it's very complicated. You should take the intersection. It's not even a factor, not even finite index, not even right. uh, irreducible, right. etc. So my question is, uh, can we characterize such p and q such that the intersection is all what you want is irreducible? Finite index factor. Can you get sufficient or necessary condition uh, good, for that? Good question. Yeah. No, but general characterization I found almost impossible. But I can characterize when the if I mean when the index is finite. And not I can correct this already done by Feng Zhu and Von Jones that this is related with certain uh, angle operator. There is a notion of angle operator between two sub factors. So these I have not done in this lecture. So we have a notion of angle operator and also uh, our, our notion of angle. So, but that is a little different. This is angle operator between two sub factor by Watatani. So that is a, uh, uh, this operator spectrum is very important. So if that spectrum is finite set, then we can say that uh, th this index lambda intersection, lambda P this one, sorry. Uh, let me write. So here M, we have P and Q. We, we, we don't need actually P intersection Q is a factor or not because we have, this is this is the usefulness of lambda. Lambda holds for beyond two one factor also for any Vondaman algebra. Whereas Jones index was defined for two one factor. So this lambda M comma P intersection Q index, this is as the in it, it, this will be finite. This is finite. If and only certain angle operator spectrum is a finite set. That is the characterization, best characterization is known. But this is again an abstract characterization. In practice, computations of angle operator is again very hard because you have to characterize the spectrum, which is very difficult, right? Characterization of space. I mean, computation of spectrum is not always easy. But uh, but I cannot answer your question that under what condition, actually in math overflow, I asked this question once that under what condition, at least you can uh, guarantee that P intersection will, Q will be a factor. So uh, probably I don't know the answer in general, but this angle operator by angle operator, we can say that when it is at least finite index. Okay. But again, when it will be irreducible, it's not known because I have example when P intersection Q is, is irreducible and not irreducible. So characterization, it, it is again related to its factor, factoriality. Because if you can prove that in that intersection is irreducible, automatically it will be a factor, right? So this is more difficult question, basically. When it will be a factor. I, I really don't know the answer. And probably that, that is what it makes this thing very interesting because you cannot characterize, at least for some example, can you compute? Okay. Thank you. So any other question? Uh, yeah. Please. Uh. <clears throat> so maybe, uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about what is angle? Because you, you said you will talk a bit about that. Oh, I thought maybe. that because of time problem. I, okay, I'll go through it. Yeah, this is some of uh, my earlier work with Zhongwei and uh, Sion and Yunxian. Maybe this provide just the right, definition or something. Yeah, I, I'll try. Uh, this is uh, probably also, uh, this is also another important invariant for two sub factor theory. I, and uh, my another collaborator, uh, Beth, is now working with his students on these angle things. This is what I will define now. So uh, basically, if you have a group and a subgroup, if you have, um, people ask what is the intermediate lattice, overgroup lattice, H subset G. So set of all subgroups, which are lying in between H and G. So similarly, von Neumann started this lattice theory. So given a subfactor in, sorry, any von Neumann algebra in subset M, let us focus on subfactor. The, what the, this L of N subset M is the set of all intermediate von Neumann subalgebra. And this forms a lattice, in fact, complete lattice under two natural operations. And if N subset M is irreducible, then this, all, this lattice will be an intermediate subfactor lattice. Like this is the intermediate subgroup lattice. And 
and this is the exact generalization of overgroup lattice for or this is for subgroup things this is the generalization of overgroup lattice so suppose we have a sub factor n cross h subset n cross g this lattice in the sub factor sense is same as lattice in the group sense so this is the perfect generalization and what happens watatani in 1996 proved that if the sub factor is irreducible and index is finite then this is a finite finite set that is what what I prove in this JFA paper, following ideas of uh, Popa and Christensen, I think. So, and then Longo in this uh, CMP paper explicitly asked this question. Uh, in, in, sorry, in the CMP paper, actually, in both type 2 and case and for the type 3 case, he has given a bound on this uh, finite set. So, the, the, what then he proved that this set is finite. Now, uh, Longo has given an explicit bound by index square, whole power index square. And then explicitly asked this question in the same communication math physics paper, whether this can be bounded by index power index or not. That was his question. And with Sion Das, Jongwe Liu, and Junxian Rain in 19, 2018 or 19, we have proved that, in fact, it can be done better, not just index power index, it can be bounded by nine power index. That that is what we proved, and uh, and uh, for that, what was our approach? Our so here is the again. Let me. This figure is always very useful. So we have this P Q and this N. Here N not necessarily P intersection Q, and if you have and also we don't assume irreducibility. What we have done, we have a we have found a new notion of angle between P and Q. Alpha n m p comma q. This this is different from the angle operator. What Watatani did. Our approach is much simpler and uh, cleaner because uh, Watatani's uh, thing was actually angle operator as, as a set. Angle as a set. Our thing is very. I like in in it is like the Jones index basically. I'll define this thing. So basically, what uh, important thing is that this half factor p just can be identified with uh, certain projection, EP. So, uh, these are called by projection, this EP. This is by this word. And th so this is a point. So basically now sub factor become a point, VP. VP is uh, this, so uh, uh, sorry, I'll, this is my uh, Jones projection EP. Think of this as a sub factor. This is a point. And this is N, EN. So this is my uh, origin E. So this, this is another sub factor, EP and EQ, now became a point. So basically, angle between these two lines in N prime intersect M1. N prime intersect M1 is a finite dimensional bond uh, algebra. It has a trace. So it can be given an inner product using this Markov trace. Then this is the cos inverse of this operator, EP minus EN, and you make it unitized. This is the unitization. So angle between these two in the in the relative commuter. So uh, this is basically uh, let me write here cos alpha will be trace of EPQ index minus one root under P index n minus one. So this is actually like the Jones index because anyway Jones what is the Jones index? Jones index is nothing but trace of E n. That is one definition inverse of trace of E n. And this is trace of EPEQ. So it is actually generalization of Jones index, at least in, uh, I think in this way. Uh, so this is much more natural. And one nice thing, what quite surprisingly, this is actually connected with Kissing number in geometry. Because we proved how we approach Longo, that we proved that angle between that P and Q, minimal angle between minimal intermediate subfactor is always greater than 60 degrees. And that is why this uh, kissing number came into the picture. And this is very nice, I found. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the, and using this, we can estimate and found the bound that it is less than 9 to the body. So, uh, and also similarly in, in plane geometry, you know that there's an angle between, angle between two lines. And similarly, you have an angle between two uh, exterior angle, right? The in, in turn, interior angle and exterior angle. Here also you can define using basic construction exterior angle between P and Q. And this interior angle is pi by 2 is very important in subfactor theory. This is called commuting square. And its exterior angle is pi by 2 called co-commuting square. So these are 
uh, very important engagement. And I believe that uh, this would be a nice project, uh, uh, but not probably not very easy. Uh, what are the possible values of this angle? For that, I think new kind of theory is needed. So I, I finish by saying another thing that here actually we could we could uh, uh, prove that this is n subset m. It is uh, lattice of intermediate set. This L of n subset m. This is bounded by index power index. Jongwe has this conjecture that. Uh, so not, I mean, he asked this question, can it be bounded, uh, can it have a polynomial bound? I think that is a very important question. And uh, if you um, think about that one, uh, that's nine new theory might be developed. So this is very important. Uh, we don't know anything, whether this has polynomial bound. We have only this exponential bound. So, so this is also another ingredient for two subfactor theory, which I have not done in this talk. So, but, but this is also that we have these three ingredients. One is angle between two subfactor, another one is entropy, another one is probabilistic index, and uh, yeah, so this thing, these three, and another one probably this angle operator. So which are all related in some sense, but probably most powerful will be the von Stormer relative entropy. Okay, thank you. This much I have to say about angle. I I won't go to any details more. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. And thank you. of course, my, my big question is how, how far this can be uh, uh, generalized to tensor category? As I already yeah, discussed nice. with you, it's, uh, for me, it will be very interesting to see how much it can be Yeah, right, right. Done. Uh, so probably in, in some uh, JLMS paper uh, with Bayes, I, I have done this for inclusion of simple sister algebra. So mm. all these things can be done for type three also. And the, whatever this angle we have defined. And also more generally, we can do for simple sister algebra. So okay. uh, probably we next we should try about that uh, tensor category also. Mm. So uh, okay. why that type two one and type three both are example of simple sister algebra. So that angle between simple sister algebra covers both type two and type three. But mm. beyond simple, even for any sister algebra. Uh, there are various difficulties in defined angle. One, one of the reason is that there are not enough conditional expectation in sister mm -hmm. algebra. So probably in tensor category, those kind of things one need to see what are the... Uh, so what do you mean by angle? There should be some subcategories, yeah. angle between subcategories. Yeah, yeah you, you consider Frobenius algebra object. Uh, the point yeah. is to how to de define or generalize notion of angle between two Frobenius algebra What are the notions of conditional expectation there? Oh, uh, that is important. No, I don't know. I don't know. In fact, it's yeah. I don't know. That one should pass thing probably. It's uh, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, this is important because if you do this, then under single umbrella, everything will be there. So it is important to think probably in categorical. Language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any other question? Any other question? Okay, so if not, uh, let me thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so um, I hope I, we, we can see you <laughs> soon. If you can, if you can join, if you can come to, to China, it would be very nice. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> Ah. <sighs>